Um, my friend uh, John Gleason on YouTube, he actually brings up this idea, and he brought it up in our conversation on YouTube about Adam being in the third heaven. Um, so, so we talked about the Adam theology where Jesus is compared to Adam. Well, that doesn't harm the celestial Jesus model in their eyes because, well, Adam's from paradise, which was the Garden of Eden. And Paul tells us, once knew a man who went to the third heaven, went to paradise, and there are things unutterable I cannot say, and yada, yada, yada. I don't exactly appreciate the yada, yada, yada part, just because it would be beneficial to actually recite what's literally being said in Paul's writings. But I also disagree with the notion that that we understand at how Adam's body was constructed because of this. This particular aspect of it, what it solidifies is the notion of, of Jesus, or, or the Christ, rather, being being buried in the firmament. If other people were being buried up there in the heavens, then there's no problem for Jesus to be buried in the heavens. So this is something that Jews would have believed if it existed at the time. As far as like in the mythicist hypothesis, we don't we don't use this particular section, as far as I understand it, to prove that Adam's body was somehow constructed or that Paul believed that Adam's body was constructed. H how we actually establish that is not concerned with Paul's concept of of, of where Eden was whatsoever. Paul's concept of Adam is, is like he reads in, in the Septuagint that God fashioned this body for Adam out of, out of dirt. Being that, Paul uses the word genomai in order to describe Adam's body. It, whenever Paul describes Adam's body or talks about Adam coming into being, he uses genomai. He also, uh, Paul, uses that of our resurrection bodies, uh, this word genomai, because God fashions and creates them. He causes Causes them to come into being in that fashion. Whenever Paul talks about Jesus and whatever you see being rendered as being born, born of a woman, that particular part, that's Galatians 4, 4, he specifically uses genomai. And that's actually different from how the Septuagint uses that phrase, born of a woman, because the Septuagint uses genao in order to construct that phrase. But Paul makes a very conscious decision to use genomai. And the only time that Paul uses genomai in order to infer anything about what Paul thinks about Jesus's body, how he came into being, he relates that to Adam's body and a future resurrection bodies using this one word. And so that's kind of how we get to Jesus had a manufactured body or Jesus had a body that was brought into being. That's the explanation for that. This particular portion is actually just used to solidify that Jews would have believed in a Christ buried in heaven because they already believed in something that goes farther than that, uh, being that Adam is buried in the third heaven. So he equivocates the, the paradise with Adam being in the Garden of Eden. So technically, Adam was this third heaven being. Um, and then so when we say Jesus was born of a flesh, you know, under the law, the whole nine— and he's like Adam, but he's the last Adam that is actually doing it the right way. He's just in heaven this whole time. I would say that with with the creation of Adam's body, that is the conclusion. But as far as uh, this particular part right here, while Paul's scripture does indicate that Adam was, in fact, a celestial figure to him, or at least starts out as this divine celestial figure in the heavens, that's not where we get this idea from. Uh, we get this idea of Adam being uh, having a created body and, and paradise being in, in the heavens from different places, which, like I said, we'll get to here in a minute. We'll actually read some source documentation uh, about that. Just to orient y'all, this is a common idea in not only academia, but also in our source material for Jewish Christians in the first century. This is not like a fringe idea. This is well supported in academia, just so y'all know. <laughs> And so I know I know you don't agree with that, but like, can you help us understand what is going on in Paul? And is there a way to explain this that makes better sense with the earthly model rather than saying this is paradise in outer space? 
Well, James McGrath with his shitting grin is definitely going to have a hard time doing this without being dishonest or disingenuous because it's common knowledge that in the cosmology at the time, there were multiple levels to heaven and that paradise was in the third heaven. This is not the place where, you know, we, we get this idea from. Like, it's not like Paul says it. So therefore, that's where it comes from. It comes from other places. So before actually, you know what? I'll just go ahead and fuck it. We'll just go ahead and bring up the sources since I keep talking about it. Right. I've got a whole hell of a lot of stuff. Now, this is R.H. Charles, who's a he's a scholar working specifically in this field. Now, this comes from uh, a little ditty known as the Apocalypse of Moses. But uh, uh, the Apocalypse of Moses also goes by another name, uh, I guess a stage name, if you will, of the life of of Adam and Eve, where they actually discuss Adam and Eve's life, where they died and where, more importantly, where they were buried. So we're just going to, right, let's just read from the top, shall we? To see how, how fucking ridiculous is, this is a first century text, by the way. It's, it's either uh, Christian or uh, I think it might be Jewish, but oh yes, in many other Jewish apocrypha. Yeah. Okay. So I do believe that this is a, a Jewish text. It says right at the top and God saith to him, Adam, what hast thou dumb done if thou hast kept my commandments there would now be no rejoicing among those who are bringing thee down to this place yet i tell thee that i will turn their joy to grief and thy grief will turn i turn to joy and i will transform thee to thy former glory and set thee on the throne of thy deceiver but he shall be cast into this place to see thee sitting above him then he shall be condemned and they and they that heard him and he shall be grieved uh, grieved sore when he seeth thee sitting on his honorable throne and he stayed there three hours lying down and thereafter the father of all sitting on his holy throne the golden shitter stretched out his hand and took Adam and handed him over to the archangel Michael saying I'm gonna yell this for those in the back and those hard of hearing and those not wanting to really understand this left him up into paradise unto the third heaven and leave him there until that fearful day of my reckoning it says let me let me blow this up for you this is this is a jewish text first century jewish text talking about adam and eve lift him up into paradise unto the third heaven and leave him there which i will make in the world then michael took Adam and left six, uh, oh, and left him where God told him in the third heaven in paradise. So this was a known thing in, in uh, not only academia now, but also the Jewish Christian community at the time that Adam's body uh, was buried up in the third heaven. Later on uh, in this same part, which y'all can look it up, it's, it's either the life of Adam and Eve or the apocalypse of Moses. Either one, I do have a link in the description for the apocalypse of Moses where you can go and read it. You you see the little uh, things there. It's 39. And I don't know why they, they do their numbering like this, but it's like 39 and 37 is is those two things. Well, what Michael does is uh, Michael takes the body, cleans it, takes it up to the third heaven in order for Adam's body to be buried. Eve is uh, knowing that she's about to die. She, she also gets taken up to the third heaven to be buried. Abel also is taken up to the third heaven to be buried. So God commands Michael, which there's there. Like, even the JWs think that that uh, Michael is actually the Christ, like Jesus. Like there's an actual academic argument that says that Michael is Jesus. And there's denominations now that believe this, the Jehovah's Witnesses, as shitty as they are. Th this is another uh, text that says it. There's so many other things. Let's see. Uh, Life of Adam and Eve. It, it does that in uh, Jean Delmilio, uh, University of Illinois Press, uh, affirms this, saying that uh, another in intertestamental writing the third apocalypse of baruch also places the paradise in the third heaven but interestingly enough in that particular academic uh, article there that that academic thing it also placed hades in in the third heaven as well so hades is up there coexisting alongside these other angelic figures like i said several academic scholars in in this particular area that support this idea so mcgrath here has failed 
thrilled to do the very basics, I feel, of a scholar. And you'll see you'll see here in a minute what I'm talking about. But he, he's failed to do any of this. We've already seen a little bit of the level of preview because because Derek already knows that McGrath doesn't believe this. But if McGrath doesn't believe this and he doesn't affirm what the scholarship is already telling us, then that means he hasn't read the scholarship. If he doesn't explain why the scholarship is wrong, then that further proves that he hasn't read the scholarship or he doesn't care what the scholarship says. 